Trump finds private letter Obama left in desk and just exposed his sick secret tucked inside it, as it's customary for each outgoing president to write to the incoming president, Barack Hussein Obama, left President Donald J. Trump a handwritten letter inside the first drawer of the resolute desk. The same desk Barry Soetero used as a footrest for the eight years of his dark presidency. Let's contrast the last two letters, shall we? What President George W. Bush told President Obama, dear Barack, congratulations on becoming our president. You have just begun a fantastic chapter in your life. Very few have had the honor of knowing the responsibility you now feel. Very few know the excitement of the moment and the challenges you will face. There will be trying moments. The critics will rage. Your friends will disappoint you. But, you will have an almighty God to comfort you, a family who loves you, and a country that is pulling for you, including me. No matter what comes, you will be inspired by the character and compassion of the people you now lead. God bless you. Sincerely, G.W. What President Obama wrote President Trump Dear Mr. President, Congratulations on a remarkable run. Millions have placed their hopes in you, and all of us, regardless of party, should hope for expanded prosperity and security during your tenure. This is a unique office, without a clear blueprint for success, so I don't know that any advice from me will be particularly helpful. Still, let me offer a few reflections from the past eight years. First, we've both been blessed, in different ways, with great good fortune. Not everyone is so lucky. It's up to us to do everything we can to build more ladders of success for every child and family that's willing to work hard. Second, American leadership in this world really is indispensable. It's up to us, through action and example, to sustain the international order that's expanded steadily since the end of the Cold War, and upon which our own wealth and safety depend. Third, we are just temporary occupants of this office. That makes us guardians of those democratic institutions and traditions like rule of law, separation of powers, equal protection, and civil liberties that our forebears fought and bled for. Regardless of the push and pull of daily politics, it's up to us to leave those instruments of our democracy at least as strong as we found them. And finally, take time, in the rush of events and responsibilities, for friends and family they'll get you through the inevitable rough patches. And finally, take time, in the rush of events and responsibilities, for friends and family. They'll get you through the inevitable rough patches. Michelle and I wish you and Melania the very best as you embark on this great adventure, and know that we stand ready to help in any ways which we can. Good luck and Godspeed, go. What a contrast. George W. Bush wrote a nice, short, and personal warm letter where he doesn't give any advice whatsoever on what to do as far as policy is concerned. But Barry just can't seem to control himself. He just had to go into political issues and suggest that President Trump is an elitist rich guy who has no idea what being a normal person is like. And let's not forget the civics lesson he tries to give President Trump. All this from the person who once said the Constitution kept him from doing what he really wanted to do. The Truth Server report, Obama, Constitution won't let me force Congress to do what I want we have a sitting president complaining about and denigrating the founding document of our nation. That damn Constitution with all its checks and balances, Obama seemed to be saying on the Today Show this morning with Matt Lauer. It turns out that our founders designed a system that makes it more difficult to bring about change than I would like sometimes. It seems that Obama would be much more comfortable in a more autocratic system, where he can just push through anything he wants than with a government where the power is more evenly divided, emphasis added what's frustrated people is that I have not been able to force Congress to implement every aspect of what I said in 2008, he said. That's just the nature of being president, he said. Yes, Barack, working with co-equal branches of government is what this country is all about. Darn it all. In Federalist Papers 47, James Madison tells us that the separation of powers that Obama seems to lament is essential to liberty, the accumulation of all powers, legislative, executive, and judiciary, in the same hands, whether of one, a few, or many, and whether hereditary, self-appointed, 
or elective, may justly be pronounced the very definition of tyranny. We already know that Obama sees the Constitution as a charter of negative liberties that didn't address redistributive policies and social justice, we now find he thinks the U.S. Constitution as an impediment. The Constitution is a charter of negative liberties, says what the states can't do to you, says what the federal government can't do to you, but it doesn't say what the federal government or the state government must do on your behalf. Recently, the Obama tried to negate the Supreme Court by deeming his own recess appointments constitutional. The opinion relies on no Supreme Court decision and many conclusions are unsupported in law or the Constitution, Senator Charles Grassley said in a statement. He added later that the opinion flies in the face of more than 90 years of historical practice. We also heard from U.S. Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg whining to an Egyptian television audience that our Constitution is just too darn old. We have oldest written Constitution still in force in the world. I would not look to the U.S. Constitution if I were drafting a Constitution in the year 2012, Ginsburg said in the interview, which aired on January 30 on Al Hayat TV. Could it be, Your Honor and Mr. President, that our Constitution is the oldest because it is the best? We have a sitting president and a Supreme Court justice complaining about and denigrating the founding document of our nation. The connection between the two? Oh yeah, they are both liberals, yes. A sitting president actually made a statement against the United States Constitution. The same Constitution he was sworn to protect and uphold. Unbelievable. If you actually take the time and read in between the lines of that awful note he left for President Trump you can see all this points to protecting Obama's failed legacy. And his main legacy is Obamacare. This is why he makes such an issue about how people aren't as lucky as he and Trump are. He doesn't want to build ladders of success. For those who work hard, he wants to make sure Trump continues his legacy, Obamacare, which is giving away the farm at the cost of the middle class who are the ones who truly suffered under the Obama presidency. Please share if you agree Obama just needs to retire. Please do not forget like on videos, and subscribe to the channel and comment because your vote matters to us, and do not forget to visit our page on Facebook, and liking it, and follow up, and thank you for watching.